All right, guys, Andy with Kahuna Window Cleaning. Um, I'm here to make another um, Send Gym uh, slash Radius Bomb slash Canva video. Uh, today's video, I'm going to talk about five little tips that are easy to do that's going to make your postcards look just a little bit more professional. Um, so we're in Canva.com here. Um, and uh, we've pulled up a postcard that we send out quite a bit. What I'm going to do is kind of take you through how to adjust this postcard just a little bit to make it look more professional. Um, and uh, we're going to get into some of the more advanced Canva um, uh, techniques. So if you're not really familiar with Canva, it might be a little bit difficult to keep up. That's okay. You can always just rewatch the video and uh, it, it'll make more sense to you the more times you watch it. So, first thing. Tip number one is add borders and um, shadows to your images and to your objects. I'll show you what I mean here. You see this photo of the company. This is Kelly and I. Um, this is our company photo. See how it's overlaid this background image? It doesn't, it doesn't look the best. It looks kind of busy here. Um, it runs in with the background photo. It doesn't look very clean. It doesn't look very professional. Here's what we can do to uh, help that. We're going to add a border to this photo. Now, Canva makes this a little bit difficult. You can't, it's not as easy as just selecting the picture and then click border. Um, but there's a little bit of a hack we can do. If you insert if you go here to elements and then click on the shapes, it'll drop down a ton of shapes here. And I use quite a few shapes, but in this case, we're going to need the square. So if you click the square, it will insert the square shape. We're going to change the color because this is going to be our border. We're going to change the color to white here. So we're going to shrink this down to just a little bit bigger than our, our photo here. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to arrange this in the order. We're going to send it behind our photo. So we're going to hit arrange. We're going to send this back in the order. There, now that it's behind our photo, we can even up these sides to make all four sides look perfectly symmetrical. And uh, there, I think we got it here. Yep. All right, now that all four sides are symmetrical, it looks just like a border. And when it's printed um, or saved, you're never going to know the difference. Now we're going to add a border to this um, cartoon uh, voice bubble. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the bubble. We're going to copy it, and then we're going to paste one just like it. So select the bubble. We're going to hit Control-C on your keyboard. That's going to copy. And then we're going to hit Control V, and that's going to paste the new one. So we copied this, pasted a new one. Here's the new one here. We're going to change the color now. Go over here. We're going to make this a gray. We're even going to make the accent color gray. Now we're going to send this back in the order again, just like we did with the, the uh, white border. We're going to send it back. There we are. Now, to kind of give this, um, to give this, uh, cartoon bubble kind of a 3d look to kind of make it pop a little bit more we're going to add kind of a shadow effect and I'll show you how we're going to do that here instead of putting it directly behind and making the holes all of it look symmetrical like we did with the photo here we don't want it to look completely symmetrical now we want it to look kind of like there's a little bit of a shadow you see how we did that See how it looks thicker down here at the bottom and then thinner on the sides here? That creates kind of like a 3D um, shadow type of effect. And uh, that's what we're going for here. So I'm going to tweak it, adjust it just a little bit more. There we are. So now what we've done is we've added kind of a shadow look to this. Uh, to this um, speech bubble and uh, it looks a lot more 
professional. So that was tip number one, add borders and shadows to your images. Make them pop a little bit more, make them stand out. Along with that is we want these to stand out and this background image, it's a little bit distracting. Um, we don't want their attention to go here. Um, since this is direct mail, we've only got a few seconds to capture their attention. So we don't want their attention wasted on this useless background image. Although it makes the postcard look nice, that's not where we want to direct their attention. So we're going to select this background image. We're going to go over here to Filter, hit Advanced Options. And then this blur slider, you can make the image more sharp, but we want to blur it. So we're going to blur it. We're going to put it anywhere between 20 and 30. Um, 25 is good. All right, now we've blurred the background image. It looks just a lot more neat. We've clearly directed their attention to where we want, which is our brand, um, our company photo, and our message here. And, uh, and it just looks cleaner. Uh, these two pictures don't collide as much now, and uh, it looks a lot better. And I've already done this with the background, or with the back, um, with the back, background image, the background image on the back of the postcard. Um, so we're good there. And uh, which brings me to tip number three, and that is having a consistent color scheme throughout your postcard front and back. Um, with We're lucky with our brand. We've got a, we had a phenomenal designer pick and choose our colors and our colors go very, very well together. So throughout our postcards, you're going to see this common color theme, and that is our brand. Um, now, if you don't have really a color scheme for your, for your company, um, here's what you can do for your postcards. If you go to this web page, it's called, uh, it's actually on Canva.com. So it's designschool.com or designschool.canva.com. There's an article here, and this is such a phenomenal, cool article, guys. Such a useful page. It has 50 different color schemes and color patterns, or uh, colors colors that complement each other very well. And some of these are very bright, very happy. Um, each one sets a mood, um, which is what you're going to want to do with your postcards, is say a certain message, and that includes with your color choice. So you can scroll down through here. There's 50 different options to choose from. So I know you're going to have no problem finding a design that works well for you. Um, let's say you do pick one. Let's pick one that looks pretty good. This one looks nice and professional here. Um, if you pick this, you're going to see the list of colors on the side here. Here's a cool tip. Underneath the color name, there's going to be a pound sign, and then it's going to have the color code here. If you take this color code, um, it, and it's going to be a combination of letters and numbers. So if you take this color code back to your design, select the object that you want to change colors, or you want to edit the color, hit this plus sign. So now we're editing a custom color. Here in this color code box, you can, you can put that code in and get that exact color, that exact one. Um, and so there's no like trying to guess, trying to get kind of edit the right color. You get the exact color here. And I will leave a link for uh, this web page um, either somewhere, either in the comments or uh, in the description. But look for it. It's uh, designschool.canada.com blog website color schemes. And uh, there's 50 different options here. So I know you'll find one that goes well with your brand, well with your logo well with your postcard colors, um, well with your postcard images. That's another thing too, is kind of try to match whatever colors are in your images. Um, so that, now that we've talked about um, color um, themes, color schemes, we're gonna talk about font themes and font schemes. And that's, uh, that's tip number four here, um, fonts. You want fonts, just like you want colors that complement each other, you want fonts that complement each other. Um, you don't want completely opposite fonts, although, 
I will say some completely opposite fonts, they also complement each other. Um, if that sounds really confusing for you, I hear you. What I've done um, in a lot of the postcards I've done to choose fonts to complement each other, there's a cool website called fontsinuse.com. And these guys keep up to date with all the latest trendy fonts, um, which is cool. But what's really cool is there's a tab. If you click this industries drop down, um, you can click, you can select from a whole ton of different industries and you can click um, and you can find out what sort of fonts they're currently using. So we've got everything from health and fitness, graphic design, um, government and civic, uh, entertainment. But down here, there's a services option. So you can click services service industry they have a ton of different fonts that are associated right now with the service industry kind of crazy so but if you scroll through here there's going to be a ton of fonts not all of them are going to be in canva but a lot of them will actually so if you scroll down here and you kind of you can kind of get a good idea of what fonts go together like for example here's some here's three fonts that uh, go really well together here's three more Here's more. You probably won't have all of these in Canva, but I do recognize a few of these from Canva. So um, if you pick something that you like, see if it's in Canva. Otherwise, this is a good area to get an idea of what uh, what's what's in style and what's not. So that was tip number four. Tip number five, and this is kind of this is a generalization. This can be used. Um, on your post send in postcards but also on your website your facebook page everything is you guys take a little extra time to take professional photos um i know we're all busy and take, setting up to take a really nice photo is seems like a lot of work but it will pay off big time when you have professional looking photos to put on your facebook page on your website and in your send gym postcards, uh, professional photos is going to make your design look so much more professional. And Josh talks about this all the time as uh, adding perceived value. You take professional photos, you look like a professional company. And uh, that's going to help build trust um, and uh, help make you the sale and help close the sale um, and uh, for a higher price than the rest of your competitors simply by taking professional photos. This doesn't mean you have to get out there with a really fancy camera that's got all the bells and whistles. We take all of our photos with a smartphone. But take time to set up the photo. Make sure that you're, you're clean, your shirts are clean, pressed, um, you've done your hair, you look good. Take the photo um, and take it from a lot of different angles. Take a few different photos, compare which ones you like, which ones you don't, um, and have a lot of options to choose from. If you do that, uh, you will be well on your way. So take those five tips, you guys. Um, take those five tips and uh, start working on your postcards. If you want to be added to our group that's got all these templates like, like this, uh, just send me your email. I'll get you added. Um, and, uh, yeah, until next time. See you guys.